Well, the bigger picture uh, is that school buildings account for more than half of the government's entire estate portfolio. That's a lot of property. Uh, the amount of government funding that's allocated towards the upkeep of school buildings is approximately £7 billion. And a further £2.5 billion was announced in the recent budget to go towards refurbishment work and making space available for additional prices. Now, while that might seem like a substantial amount, it's actually a lot less than it used to be. So according to a recent House of Commons report, uh, the funding for school buildings has declined by around 50% in real terms over the last 12 years. So with that in mind, it's, it's no surprise that there's a backlog of repairs and even serious safety concerns over some, over some school buildings. Uh, the Department for Education estimate the cost of the backlog to be around £11 billion pounds, or £11.5 billion pounds, to be precise. Now that's well in excess of the funding available and the situation is exacerbated by other cost pressures uh, that have led to schools to cut back on their building and maintenance spending. And 63% and of schools that responded to a recent DfE survey said that they've already done that. So the overall picture is quite challenging for schools and governing boards in terms of their budgets. But in recent months, attention has understandably been on the rising costs of occupying a school, and in particular, those soaring energy bills. So every school and trust has its own context, uh, and some have been hit harder. Uh, by other, than by others, by the volatility of energy prices due to the nature of their provision, for example. Special schools in particular uh, are hit particularly hard because of the, the, the nature of their provision and, and the type of energy contracts that they're on. So during the last autumn term and into the, into the, into the new year, we were seeing reports of bills rising by 200% in schools and trusts and the crippling impact this was having both on their budgets and on reserves as well. In some cases, in some trusts, case of some trusts, wiping them out almost completely. Now that's the extreme end of the scale, but it's clear that the vast majority of schools and trusts have been adversely affected in, in some way uh, by uh, rising costs and, and energy bills in particular. And uh, in a survey, I think that was conducted for National Governance Aware Awareness Day back in February, 89% uh, of responding boards uh, cited rising energy costs as their number one budget pressure. So we can see that it is having a considerable impact. Well, in broad terms, uh, the role of governing boards in managing the estate, and when we talk about the school estate, that's the premises, the land, the infrastructure. Uh, the broad role we have is ensuring that our estate is safe and efficient and above all provides the right environment for our pupils and our staff to thrive and like most governing responsibilities uh, there's no one size fits all approach to doing that and that's because overseeing the state the legal interests and the limitations and responsibilities will vary depending on the type of school or governing structure uh, that you have so for example um, some, some people watching, watching this may govern at a school that's been set up through a private finance initiative or PFI uh, to use the acronym where a private contractor operates and maintains the buildings for an agreed period uh, which is typically 25 years. Now making those contracts work provides specific challenges for boards relating to the rising costs of debt, finance, equity and, 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 and other factors but it also um, means that they have uh, specific responsibilities uh, around monitoring the performance of that contract uh, over, that, over that period of time. So the, the, the best advice that you, we, you know, I can give to any governing board uh, that wants to take a strategic oversight of their estate is to ensure that they're, you know, they're clear about where their legal responsibilities and accountabilities rests because they vary from school to school depending on uh, the legal interests, land ownership and, and things like that. But broadly speaking, uh, the, ro the role that all boards have is to ensure that their estate is safe, efficient and above all provides the right environment for pupils and staff to thrive. My advice to governing boards will be to start by reviewing the asset management plan they have for their school or trust or at least familiarise themselves with it. And if you're not part of a resources committee or a premises committee that does that, it's worth it's worth do, it's worth familiarising yourself with the asset management plan and the strategic and, and seeing how they align with the strategic priorities of the school or trust. The plan should be one of the vehicles 
for achieving the board's vision for pupils. And drilling down into that plan will tell you some really important things. It will tell you how you're addressing issues and key findings arising from things like health and safety audits, condition surveys and benchmarking data uh, to see how your procurement practice, for example, is, is stacking up against other, other schools. It's also a, a provides a, a gateway for asking some very straightforward and fundamental questions about how your estate is being managed and developed in the interest of your pupils. So the type of questions you should be asking in broad terms should establish, you know, how safe, warm, weatherproof uh, your, your estate is and, and how it's been improved to become a better learning environment. And, and when you have that sort of broad level of understanding, you'll be able to ask questions about whether investment in, in maintenance and development is being targeted in the right areas, whether the goods and services and works that you're procuring for the estate are being uh, procured uh, from, from the right people uh, and are providing good value for money, and especially how energy and water and other resource usage is, is being managed efficiently and waste kept to a minimum. Now, those are broad areas, but there are also things that you can delve into, whether it's with leaders, whether it's with business professionals, um, or, or other people, estate managers in your school and trust, starting from the position that it's always possible to do things differently and explore, explore from there. Uh, and this, of course, is where sustainability takes on a, on a wider meaning, because what's good for the long term financial health of your school or trust is also likely to benefit the planet as well, which is good news for your pupils and it's good news for the future generation of pupils. So again, the most basic of inquiries about the estate can often lead to a conversation that leads to a decision that leads to a tangible improvement. And that's the real governing mindset that we'd like to we'd like to get ourselves into. So, you know, my advice to boards would be to be curious and ask about the estate, ask if energy energy um, use is monitored and if not, how can we start to do that? Is there an existing policy that the school or trust has to manage its campus or estate in a sustainable fashion? Um, what investment might the trust and or, or school or trust target to improve their environmental sustainability? That, that for example, could be something like LED lighting, insulation, solar panels, uh, ground source heat pumps, all, all, all manner of things like that. Is outdoor space being used or utilised? in the right way to improve not just biodiversity but the learning environment in, in general and there's some wonderful examples of pupil pupils uh, through a broad and balanced curriculum and enriched learning experience doing things like growing their own food produce which yeah, you know is really creating a, a sense of environmental awareness but also is, is great for the estate as well and, and, and it leads on to other questions you know that, that could relate to energy suppliers uh, how they use renewable technologies, and could you know could could they uh, our procurement be more sustainable? Uh, and water use, and, and you know, are there uh, is there financial assistance and grants and things like that available that that could assist the school or, or trust uh, to make its estate more environmentally sustainable? And each school or trust will have its own context, of course, but those those types of broad questions. Um, are worth asking and there are a lot of resources a lot of supporting resources that are out there to help boards adapt them and contextualize them uh, so that they have an impact nga for example provides a guide to improving environmental sustainability in schools and trusts and there's so much support available whether that's from the dfe or other organizations and much of that is free so my advice to boards are really to to be to explore that and and, and just stick to that to that mantra that what is good for the financial sustainability of your school or trust is also likely to be good for the overall sustainability and that's good news for pupils.